I mean, they're old now, but from back in the day are on, uh, are on Facebook. And I've come to decide that part of it is the people who stay active have always been that way. I, I don't know what you've seen from your old Facebook contacts and, <laughs> you know, you may not want to, I certainly don't want to insult anybody, but, but I found that people who my memory, as I remember them back in the day, were pretty uninterested in things around them are no different now, except that now it can, it can not only shorten your life, but you know, you, you tend to lose your marbles. That's not a good combination. Well, yeah, and then they start losing, more than that, they lose their memory, you know, you're carrying a conversation, yeah. and you know what, the conversation, you go see them like uh, once or twice a month, and you go over to their house, and you start, you know, talking, and they're telling you the story they told you the last time you were there. You know? oh, and and, and oh, then, then you go yeah. again a month later, and now they're telling you the same story they told you, so it's the same story <laughs> over and over again, you know, and it's like, oh, wow, you know, is this, hey, you know, don't you have anything else to tell me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, too, I have a, a dear friend of mine who is real, not born about the same age, but is really in poor health, and, and part of it, I think, uh, you know, a number of people who, when they're in, in your case, you know, you didn't take advice that would have made you sedentary, but in some cases, people who are told to change their lifestyle, exercise more, or do whatever, you know, they should be doing simply don't do it. And they get quite ill because of it. And my friend who I think the world of is went from pre diabetes to the full blown thing because there was no desire to change lifestyle that was required to stave it off and that sort of thing. And boy, you pay a price for that. I mean, you really do. Oh, yeah. You start losing limbs, too. But, you know, I mentioned last night on my show about we were talking about, you know, UFOs and genetics and all this stuff. Uh -huh. But, you know, I one of the businesses I ran for uh, well, almost 16 years when I got out of radio and, and took a, a break from it was a professional camera uh, store chain of three stores. And one of the sales reps would come in, and now he was like 85, 86 years old. The guy was yeah. like six foot two, skinny as a rail. But, you know, he walked like somebody was like in their 30s. I mean, he could just, you know, wow. But, you know, he would come in and he'd say, you know, what I was doing this weekend, I was working in my garden. And I figured, hey, it's a small garden. And I said, well, how, how big is your garden? He goes, well, it's a quarter acre. <laughs> okay and then a quarter acre yeah and then you know a little bit later you know he came in another time because he come in once or twice a month trying to sell his photography equipment naturally uh you know he was talking about how he was getting ready for the ski season and i started thinking well you, you water skiing this time of year he goes no i still snow ski and I'm starting to think, wow, you know, and then yeah, I figured, okay. I'll, I figured this guy is a little bit full of BS. Okay. Maybe he's coming down without, no, about another month later, he comes riding in on his Harley and, <laughs> you know, you know, with his sales stuff, you know, coming in and, you know, and I watch him take off his helmet and I said, you ride a Harley too? And he goes, yeah, I ride it all the time. Guy's like 85, 86 years old. And, you know, the guy, yeah. you know, how many people? You know, I had a case back about two years ago. I was at a local little store. It has a gas station. And I was in there pumping gas in my motorcycle. And this guy was pumping gas in his car. And he was probably, I was probably, what, 65? And he was probably around 63 or something. And yeah. he was telling me how sexy my bike was. They always wanted a ride. And I said, well, why don't you get a motorcycle and, and ride? And, 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 and do no, it, yeah. And you know what he said? I'm too old. And I, I laid into the guy, you know, I said, look, don't give me blankety blank. You know, if you want to do yeah. something, try it out. You can go and, and, and go take a course and you don't even have to buy a motorcycle. And I figured, hey, you know, the guy's just, you know, listening to me. About a month later, I'm back at the store because I go there quite often. Uh, and he comes riding in on his motorcycle. And the guy remembered my name, and he goes, hey, Gary, I got my motorcycle. I got my motorcycle. Hey, you know, uh, maybe he might have broke his right? neck by now, but uh -huh. you know what? He was happy. But the point yep. is, in his mindset, he was too old. 
you know, it takes a lot of, uh, it takes a lot of courage to change your, your life like that. You know, I was thinking about your show where you do with paranormal stuff and, uh, we had a software business and we put our tech support in South Dakota. Uh, for a lot of reasons, had an idea to link up small towns with the uh, with the internet because the work ethic is so great there. So uh, you know, it it uh, in terms of the paranormal and that kind of thing, uh, I was always kind of a skeptic up until I met this farmer. Now this guy was really ridiculed for a while. He was a very straight guy, and one day he went into this little town where. I know a lot of people, and I also know this guy. And he announced one day that he had been in a flying saucer, and of course in South Dakota. I mean, are you kidding me? The hilarity and the laughing and stuff was enormous. He was down by the border, <laughs> and everybody was short of water. There's a big aqua fire there, but they they were having they're already draining it. They were having trouble, and he announced to the hooting and hollering of the crowd that his saucer friends had told him where to drill to find water that would never, that would be more than he would need and would never run out. And to great community pressure against it and, and jeering and laughter and, and so forth. I mean, his, his kids got the point they wouldn't speak to him anymore because he was considered such a kook. He went out and he hired a drilling rig and he drilled right where he said he was supposed to drill. And by God, Gary, he struck water, so much of it, that he couldn't use it, and nobody around him could get anything. And ever since that time, I mean, this was the straightest guy you're ever going to want to meet, and that's the only, I don't even want to call it weirdness anymore. It was the only thing out of the norm, let's say, that he ever did or said, I think in his whole life. And when this happened, he was in his early 60s. Can you imagine? But he just took a position of, no, this is what happened to me, and they told me what to do. And uh, and he did it, and it happened exactly like he said it was going to happen. I, I, I've never forgotten it. In fact, I wanted to write a story about this guy. But in, you know, in terms of he never did anything else really strange. I kind of write stories about the strange, I guess. And so, uh, but I wanted to mention that to you because, you know, you cover a lot of that stuff. And to this point, I still don't know what to make of it. I mean, it's just the most amazing thing. And after, I don't know, geez, Gary, two, three, four years, he still had water just shooting out of that well of his, literally, like an oil gusher, you know? Oh, wow. And other folks couldn't even pump it out of the ground. It's just the most amazing thing. Now, did he share it with the other people? Oh, sure. I mean, I mean, that's kind of the way it is there. So he used everything he could use on his farm, and then he dug with the other farmer sort of a trench and got it down to a, a central ditch, and a lot of people ended up tapping off it. And as you can imagine, the hilarity and all the rest of the, the snide comments stopped and never returned. <laughs> oh yeah, I believe that because but I will say this, yeah. you know, I've had people on my show that, you know, come out and say, "Hey, the world is flat." You know, there is people out there that actually believe the world is flat. And uh I feel sorry for them, but you know what? There is things out there that we just I can't account for. But I can't yeah. believe that we're the only humanoids walking around in this galaxy or any other galaxy out there. I do think there is life out there. And, yes, I do think we are being visited. And, you know, maybe 10, 15 years ago, if you said, hey, I, you know, got on a UFO or I was abducted or, you know, people would look at you as you're crazy. But it, since oh. you're on Facebook right now, you probably see how much people are, are posting stuff about UFOs and, and disclosure. It's it's changed big time. Yep. And also, you know, when you just look at the numbers, the just the numbers and the odds, you know, numbers of stars, planets, and all the rest of it, the odds, it's possible we're alone out there. I don't think so either. But uh, the the numbers shout that the fact that we are somehow 
unique that nothing else has ever happened where life could evolve. The numbers sh shout that this is not really likely. Let's put it that way. So, uh, so yeah, I agree with that. I think that uh, you know the odds that we're the only intelligent, <laughs> although depending on your your politics, I guess one could argue that. But the intelligent or self-aware species in the entire universe, uh, I don't think uh, I don't think rational numbers and po and probabilities uh, support that. I just don't. So. We could both be all wet, you and I, but nonetheless, I, I, I think the odds are against us being all by ourselves. Well, you know, I, I can, all I can say is I've actually talked to some people that actually, you know, were type of people. If, I guess if they went out and told people, you know, their occupation, you wouldn't want to go see them because you'd be scared to. And a lot of people are scared to say, hey, I saw an alien or I was abducted or I think I have an implant. They don't want to talk about it because still, I mean, you can sit there and say, I saw a UFO and people will go, okay, where did you see that? What did it look like? And and that if you say anything more than that, they'll start looking at you. Hey, this guy's a little strange. Yeah. Yep. So it's, it's, it's tough. And they have a, you know, somebody who's had an experience like that, like my farmer friend, uh, like you say, just to talk about it, I mean, you're running the risk of, 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 of literally losing your place in society, or at least you were prior to some of the, the recent events. And also, you know, the way that I think people now watch science marching forward, uh, the idea that we're never going to be able to go anywhere or visit anything because it's too far away, I think it's pretty obvious that you know, we ourselves could have a breakthrough at any, at any time. And physicists are talking about the string theory and, and all, and, and the, uh, even Einstein said the, the, the possibility of, you know, the two electrons in wildly different places acting, you know, in the same way, like they're in tandem with each other. He called it, uh, the, the spookiest thing he'd ever, he'd ever imagined or was verified by his theories. So, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot out there, and I think our understanding is growing every day. Well, I think I, you know, I hate to say it, I think we should take Hawkins, uh, what he said about, you know, broadcasting out to the universe, our location. Uh -huh. Uh, he yeah. really warned against that because he goes, as he pointed out so many times, we don't know what's out there. I mean, let's face it, we could bring in a warlike uh, humanoid population towards Earth that uh, didn't even know we were here. And it could be like War of the Worlds. We don't know that. And he was warning the governments, don't broadcast our location. I think that makes some sense, you know, to assume that... And it, a species, the word alien, literally, I mean, that, that we don't understand anything about their society or philosophy or how they view things, to assume that anybody and everybody out there is going to be benign would, I think, be like assuming that every society on Earth is somehow benign to all of their societies. And we all understand clearly that is not the case. Oh, yeah. Well, look at the cavemen, okay, prehistoric man. All of a sudden, if we could go back in time, and all of a sudden we were encountered with prehistoric man, how would they react to us? How would we react to them? We would just, we would take, well, I hate to say it, we would uh, eliminate them really fast. Because, uh, you know, that's how our society is. And when you go to a civilization, maybe it's so far advanced, they could just look at us the same way that, uh, you know, we shouldn't exist. And w was it Arthur C. Clarke who said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic? Pretty much, yeah. And, and, and I think there's something to that as well, that, that uh, you know, I think you go back 30 or 40 years to introduce people to the iPhone and the rest of it, 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 would, look, it would look like magic. In the, in, but it's simply a product of advanced technology. So, yeah, I'm with you there. I mean, I think that making certain basic assumptions and risking society, uh, and maybe more than that, on the basis of assumptions, 
uh, yeah, I think is is a foolish thing to do. Yeah, I know. <laughs>